<laughs> service today at Christ Church New Sargate and Free and Balance on 28 June 2020. My name is Ola Lawal and I will be leading the service today along with Sue and Sally. Our minister, Reverend Ruth Moriarty, is on annual leave. We wish her rest for time. Let us pray. All bind to God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 89. We we'll read together the words in bold. It talks of God's love and faithfulness. O oh Lord, I will always sing of your constant love. I will proclaim your faithfulness forever. I know that your love will last for all time, that your faithfulness is as permanent as the sky. You said I have made a covenant with the man I chose. I have promised my servant David. A descendant of yours would always be king. I will preserve your dynasty forever. How happy are the people who worship you with songs, who live in the light of your kindness. Because of you, they rejoice all day long and they praise you for your goodness. You give us great victories. In your love, you make us triumphant. You, O oh Lord, chose our protector. You, the only God of Israel, give us our King. Our hymn this morning is Love Divine or Love Excelling. Please join us if you can.
Let us acknowledge our sins. We read together the words in bold. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that we live in a world in which many are hungry, sad, hurt, and suffer from injustice. We confess that we do not always do what is right. We ask your forgiveness, clean your love and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. May the God of mercy, who forgives all our sins through Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit and keep us in eternal life. Amen. As Jesus taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Bible reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Sue will be reading the Bible passage to us. Thank you, Sue. Our reading today comes from Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes God's messenger, because he is God's messenger, will share in his reward. And whoever welcomes a good man, because he is good, will share in his reward. You can be sure that whoever gives even a drink of cold water to one of the least of these my followers, because he is my follower, will certainly receive a reward. Amen. Can you guess which countries use these words and the meaning in English? They all mean welcome. Welcome in Hebrew. Welcome in Norwegian. Welcome in Yoruba. Welcome in French. And welcome in Spanish. Everyone loves a warm welcome. A warm welcome says we are loved, wanted, and valued. Jesus expects us to welcome all, which is why he said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, so we may hear your word with joy. Amen. There's a video attached to below for our young children to watch. Welcome is a simple word used in many parts of the world. I found on the internet 138 ways to say welcome, but I guess there will be plenty more ways considering over 7,000 languages are spoken in the world, um, according to worldatlas.com. In some languages, you can pick up the welcome sound readily. In Norway, for example, it is velkommen, while in other languages, the sound is totally different. In France, it is bienvenu. In Spain, it is bienvenida. In Israel, it is baruch haba. And in the western part of Nigeria, it is equabo. If five people say welcome at the same time in these languages to a friend or family member, the common thing we will probably pick up are the joy in their voices and the loving expressions on their faces, despite not understanding the language. 
Amidst the easing of the lockdown after this devastating pandemic, it had been good to see the welcoming joy and loving faces of grandparents welcoming their you know, grandchildren for the first time weeks after they had been born. It had also been good to see the joy and happy faces of Hetty and Bella as they welcomed back their mom, an NHS nurse, after nine weeks away from them, where she worked on the front line during the health crisis. In a way, this welcoming and joy that we've seen, the various ways we've seen people welcoming um, amidst the devastation had been good. And they just showed us and reassured us in a way that no matter how bleak our situation may be, Jesus loves us. His light will always shine through, shine through any bleakness. In the passage we have just read, Jesus talked about the importance of welcome. He says, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. The sentence could easily be limited to the 12 disciples, as it was his 12 disciples Jesus was talking to in most of Matthew chapter 10. To clarify the welcome Jesus was talking about is not limited to the disciples. He broke it down to help us understand he wants us to welcome all. He used the word messengers, which one could sort of limit to the church ministers and the missionaries who follow in the disciples' footsteps, spreading the good news of Jesus. He, wants, he went on to say we should welcome good people. The passage finished with whoever well, I mean, gives a drink of cold water to one of the least of these, my followers, will receive a reward. Meaning, we must welcome everyone, even where we don't perceive that person as good. Jesus used the word welcome six times in the short passage to emphasize the importance of welcome to him. He promised us a share, you know, in the reward of any messenger and any good person we welcome, as well as a reward for the least of his followers. Jesus mentioned reward three times in the short passage to assure us none of our good deeds is in vain, that blessings will flow from God when we show love and generosity to others. What has touched every one of us during this pandemic is the kindness and help many had willingly and joyfully rendered to others. The government, the government had been unbelievably <laughs> generous to many. Many of the homeless were provided with shelter and food. Charitable organizations did all they could. The church appeared more welcoming and visible with their numerous online television and radio worship, which encouraged many church attendees to join Sunday worship. All these meaningful activities by individuals, church, communities, and the government, in my opinion, were various ways all were welcomed during this pandemic. The various days would hopefully have helped in a small way to stabilize or improve the mental, emotional, physical, or financial health of many amidst the sadness and horror of the pandemic. No wonder Jesus asked us to welcome all, and not just those that fit the bill. Jesus knows that a meaningful, generous welcome goes deep, it could make or break the person. As we slowly enter the new normal after this pandemic lockdown, many are anxious, grieving, or sad. We must try not to use this as an excuse to stop welcoming all. Jesus is our comforter, our sustainer, our protector. He loves us. He will help us through our situation. 
let us build on what we have started by permanently putting aside our biases on gender, race, color, creed, age, disability, or sexual orientation. To always try and see everyone with the loving eyes of Jesus that loves and welcomes all. This is the best way to break down barriers, tensions, mistrust, and chaos, either within the church, the community, or the society, can only be prevented when we genuinely welcome all, allow all to de develop their talents and to reach their optimal potential. The reward for welcoming all by a church a community or society are growth, peace, and prosperity. What more? Apart from the blessings from God when we try to welcome all, there's also an eternal reward from Jesus, a crown of glory and a crown of life. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your word. Open the eyes of our hearts so we can see all with your welcoming, loving eyes. This we ask in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sally will um, lead our prayer of intercession. Thank you, Sally. Good morning, Christ Church. Dear Lord God, we pray for the church. We ask you to bless all Christian ministers throughout the country. Please give them the right words to communicate to believers and those searching for answers during uncertain times. Encourage all believers to communicate your life-giving message of outrageous welcome and constant love. We pray for the world and its leaders. Please give all leaders of countries and communities wisdom and courage to speak out and act against injustice. Create a groundswell of people working for tolerance and peace throughout the world. Help us humans protect our endangered environment and communities. Protect and strengthen indigenous tribes and people without power or influence. Please gather unusual, powerful and unexpected allies to work on their behalf. Help us all to respect and protect our biodiversity and take its active care and protection very seriously. Prick our consciences to feed native wildlife, remove litter and debris from our woods and parkland, create wildlife corridors and plant flowers for bees and pollinating insects. Help us find space and food for all of your creatures to have a home to thrive in. We pray for our own country. Please bless Queen Elizabeth and thank you for her steadfast Christian witness to our nation. We ask you to continue providing experts to give sound guidance and wisdom to Boris Johnson and his cabinet as they continue to steer our country through the COVID-19 pandemic. We ask you to reduce infection rates in our country and help the scientists in their search for a vaccine and better treatments for those who are infected with the virus. Restore our weary medical teams to full health and energy levels. We ask you to help the speedy restoration of our economy and ask for the vulnerable and the younger generation to be protected during the recovery. Help our leaders reassess what matters and what needs to be prioritised in the future. Give our young people a good and certain future. Help everyone facing job insecurity, unemployment and redundancy. Give them courage and peace to face an uncertain future and produce opportunities for them to flourish once more. We pray for our society. We ask that the Black Lives Matter campaign can achieve positive change peacefully. Please help our society find peaceful resolutions to injustice caused by racism, po poverty, power, politics, social status, educational attainment, sexism and ageism. We ask you to help adults and children trapped inside homes experiencing domestic violence during the lockdown. Please send the Holy Spirit to give courage and practical means of escape to those suffering. Prevent the worst bullying, intimidation and physical violence. 
Please enable funding to be increased for services which provide solutions to those living in fear and facing violence. We pray for Christchurch. We thank you for our minister, Reverend Ruth Moriarty, and ask you to bless her richly throughout her mission at Christchurch. Please send your Holy Spirit to help her guide us spiritually through the pandemic and beyond. Please encourage her and let your work in our community be evident to her every day. Thank you for the deacons and everyone who gives time and energy to Christchurch. We pray for the family of Joyce Percy, who died on Monday, and ask that you send peace to her children, Karen, Steve and Gary, as they mourn her passing. We place Peter Griffiths and all who are mourning the loss of a beloved person and ask for peace and resilience for them at this time of grieving. Please bless anyone who is sick in Christchurch. Please be with each of them and help the medical teams find solutions to their sickness. Please restore them to full health swiftly. Please bring comfort to those who are lonely and isolated and reassure everyone that this, un this uncertain time will pass and we will see each other again to worship at Christ Church. All these petitions we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. We say the grace prayer together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.